Let's talk about how to crush it off the tee, how to really hit your driver the best. And let's back up a little bit for the first and let's talk about developing as a player, developing as somebody who's going to be really good with the driver so you can swing it freely. And so here's what I would, I would say about this. There, there is a certain um, ca category of golfer. It tends to be somebody who is a little bit younger, people who have a little bit more distance who Boy, every time they pull out the driver right now, they're risking disaster. So if you're one of those guys that when you hit a bad drive, it's out of bounds and it's penalty strokes, or if it's in the woods, then we wanna, we wanna stop hitting driver on the golf course and start working more on developing about becoming a better driver. Okay, let's talk about step-by-step -step our setup for hitting the driver. I want you to notice that I've got two alignment sticks on the ground. And I highly recommend that you put down a couple of golf clubs or a couple of sticks. You don't have to buy these sticks. Here they cost me $2 a piece. I used golf clubs for years. I just put a couple of clubs down there. That's fine too. But uh, I've got some, an alignment aid and a ball position aid here. So here's the thing with the driver. This club is designed to be hit from a tee. It is not to be designed to be hit from the ground. It's got, it's got relatively little loft to it, okay? So this is the only club that we have that is designed to be hit with the ball teed up. And I'm gonna set up here so that the ball is teed up where I'm gonna go ahead and pick this thing up to show you. About half of that ball is up over that, that, that leading edge crown of the driver, not the actual crown up here, but it's about half of that ball, it's about like that, is up above my driver right there. Okay, so we're gonna tee it up quite a little bit. All right, I've got it teed up nice and high. So since this is the one club that's played from a tee, we're allowed to hit up on it and hit good results, but here's the thing. We're not going to try to change our swing to hit up on the ball, okay? This is really important. If we try to hit up on it, our instincts are probably going to make us, on our downswing, start to transfer our weight back towards our back foot, okay? And we're going to probably come at the ball, I'm going to do it this way, when I, I, we're probably going to come at that ball with an out to in type of a swing path and that's going to cause slices. So many of the things that we do intuitively cause a slice, okay? So we're not going to try to lift the ball up in the air. That's going to give us slices. It's going to give us top shots as well. We don't want to do that, all right? The reason why we're able to get the ball on the upswing, the reason we're able to hit up on the ball is because of the ball position. So if I was going to play an iron shot, I would have the ball positioned right about here, just a little teeny bit forward in my stance. Well, when I go to the driver, I'm going to move it quite a bit more forward than that. And what's going to happen is I swing through, the club reaches the bottom of its swing and starts to come up just as it gets to the ball. And so I'm, I'm creating that upward strike because of the ball position. Okay. When it comes to stance, I will be generating more club head speed, more momentum, the swing will have more speed to it, even though I don't have to move my body any faster, so I'm going to play with my feet a little bit wider. Okay. So the things that we need to make sure we're going to do here, they're a little bit different, are just two things. Feet are going to be wider, ball position will be more forward. Okay. Now there's one other thing that's going to happen, but this happens with all of our clubs, and that's going to be the amount that we bend from the hips. And I'm going to talk about it even though you really should never have to worry about it. So we want to swing every golf club basically 90 degrees around our torso, around our spine. Okay? So when, when I set up to a golf shot, 
I automatically get a sense of, okay, that shaft is 90 degrees relative to my spine, and I'm going to bend from the hips, and that's where I'm going to end up. If I was hitting a shorter club, I would be bending more from the hips to maintain that 90 degree relationship. So that's why I was saying it's something you don't really have to think about, but it is true. So when we hit the driver, we will be actually bending the least amount of any of the clubs that we hit. But again, all we really want to make sure we're going to do is set up with that club pointing at our belt. So right now it's parallel to the ground, bend from the hips, and now I'm in a good setup position to hit a driver. If it was a shorter club, I would just be bending a little bit more. And it's so slight, you, you, know, you won't even really notice it. Okay? So that's really, when it comes to hitting driver, all we're going to change. Again, is ball position, width of stance, and then we will hopefully don't know it, but we'll be bending a little bit less from the hips because the club is longer. All right, going through my pre-shot routine, behind the ball. Ball position is more forward in my stance. Imagine where it's going to go, a little draw. Oh, whoa. <laughs> a little slice there. Let's try that again. Boy, another slice. This is becoming a trend. So let's say that's you. Let's say you follow the instructions. <laughs> and you're slicing every time, for example. Okay, well, there's a couple things. One is, uh, and this is why the previous thing we talked about was developing and becoming a driver using the driver. One is that because this club is the longest club, it has the least amount of loft, you're going to be exaggerating any swing flaws that you have. This is like a, this is like a microscope. If you have any little problem with, like, say, your six iron, it's going to be magnified with the driver. So part of it is if you play a little bit of a cut with, say, your six iron, you're going to probably you're going to cut your three wood even more, and you're going to probably slice your driver. When I say cut, it means a baby slice. So for a right-handed golfer, off to the right. So it could be that you're not ready for the driver yet, which means C.1, work on becoming a better driver of the golf ball. But let's just say you made these adjustments. Is there anything else we can do to dial this thing in a little bit because, say, we're slicing? First thing is this. First thing we're going to look at is this ball position. It, it may be that for me and my golf swing, I may not want to play it quite as far forward as I've been playing it. Maybe if I get it back here a little bit further back in my stance, I'll stop slicing. And the reason for that is, as the ball is further back in your stance, and you're swinging the club, say, from the inside of the target line out onto the target line, if you, 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 we want to catch the ball before the club literally starts cutting over here to the left. So when we swing around our body, you can see the club comes from the inside, out on the target line, and then back inside again. Well, if our ball position is way up here, then we're going to, we're going to, be on the target line and start traveling back inside before we hit the ball and it's going to put slice spin on the ball. So I'm just going to try that first. I'm going to go ahead and just move that ball position back a little bit. It's still forward, just not as far forward as before. Let's see what this does. Oh boy, that was good. I don't know if, if it sounded better, but that even sounded better. Okay, so for me, I just have my ball position too far forward. So let's say you're hitting your driver and you make these adjustments and you're hooking the ball quite a bit. Well, if you're hooking it, maybe the ball is just too far back in your stance and you can try to play it a little bit more forward. Okay? So the first thing we want to look at is really going to be that ball position situation if you're having trouble with, with the driver and, and this setup change because, because that's where people can get into a little bit of trouble first of all. Okay. The next thing is this, the longer the club is, you know, the longer it takes to swing, which means the more time we have to think about it. And this is something that's gotten me in trouble before. So what I try to do is I try to, um, and we'll, we'll do another little video on faults and fixes and stuff, but I want to make sure that I'm swinging the club by turning my shoulders and my, my hips. I don't want to ever feel like I'm hitting the ball with my hands. So I want to make a nice smooth swing and feel like it's the turning through 
that is getting this club to come through. It's not me hitting at it with my hands. Okay, so I'll try to make a swing after that. So nice, that was a nice smooth practice swing. Quiet, relaxed hands, feeling that club just swing around my body, just making circles around my spine. That was the best one yet. Okay. All right. So when it comes to troubleshooting with that driver, first thing, look at that ball position. Okay. Second thing, make sure you're swinging the club. You're relaxed and you're letting that club swing by turning through. You're not hitting at it with your hands. Hey, let's talk about how to get more distance with our driver. And you're actually going to like this because if you do one thing, the next thing kind of happens on the next thing. So the easiest way to get more distance is to hit the ball in the middle. Right there, boom, right in the middle of that driver. Okay. So one thing that's going to help us strike the ball in the middle more often is by, one, you can check your equipment. You might, you might hit the ball a little bit better with a slightly shorter driver. So let's try that first. Let's try actually choking down just a little teeny little bit on the club. All right, just choke down just a little bit on that club. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to feel like I'm shortening up my backswing. So I'm going to feel like I'm only taking the club back to here. Watch where it actually goes to. I promise I'm going to feel like it's only to here before I make my swing. Let's see what this actually looks like. I'll bet you that went back further than I thought it did. But it's, it, it helps you to be able to make center face contact if you can shorten up that backswing just a little bit. And, and a little thought that I have is I try to feel like I'm swinging the club back and I'm swinging the club through. So if I use a little bit less energy on the way back, I won't get as big of a backswing. Okay? So if you make a shorter backswing, it's easier to make center face contact. Also, if you make a shorter backswing, you're going to, if you go back shorter, it's less opportunity to make a bad pivot back, to slide backwards. It's also easier to not lift the club up, bending your lead elbow, anything like that. So a lot of little fundamentals get, get ironed out if we can make a little bit shorter of a backswing. Okay? Then the third thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we're truly swinging the club. This is a great drill. So take the club, put it upside down in your, for me, my right hand. So your back hand here, if you're left handed, your left hand, right? I'm going to hold my bicep against my chest and I'm going to turn back and turn through. And I'm listening for that whoosh noise. The better job that I do turning my hips and shoulders and relaxing my hand, the louder the whoosh noise is. Okay, so this is going to help get us a lot of extra distance. So I'm just going to shorten that back so with a little bit less effort going back and relax and make sure I turn through really well. That felt really good. Okay, so when it comes to getting better distance, you know, if you can just get rid of this hand thing, we want to hit it with our hands, but if we can get rid of that and let the golf swing come from the rotation of our hips and shoulders, the hands and the arms swing with the club, we're going to do a heck of a lot better. All right, so when it comes to crushing it off the tee, number one, make sure that you're competent with the driver and you can hit the ball in play almost all the time. Number two, make sure you adjust that setup so you can have a wider stance, ball position more forward. Number three, get that distance by hitting the ball in the center of the club face. You can actually make a shorter backswing and more relaxed downswing to help you hit it in the middle. Number four, a couple of drills you can do, that upside down club drill, as well as the 50% drill to help you get a feel on making much more solid contact.